five, four, three, two, one. I am Kia Lee Pun Lee. Should I spell it out? Kia Lee. Kia Lee. Kia Lee. K E A L I apostrophe I. What's going on here this weekend? Um, there is the international body surfing um championships happening here. Um, at Point Panic, one of the best body surfing breaks like in the whole world. Super exciting. A lot of good waves that came in so far. But we'll see what happens. Body surfing, it's often described as the purest form of connecting with the ocean, right? Yes, yes. Um, for us, especially us islanders and um, Hawaiians, and even in the ancient times, um, you had to, you basically had to be of chiefly status or have some form of royalty to be able to surf on a board. And the bigger your board was, the higher your status was as well. And so, who were the body surfers? It was the commoners, the makainana, the everyday people. So that's why this body surfing is such a, um, not only just like a sport as what we most would call it today, but it's a culture. It's our, our way of life. This is what we, this is what we do or, you know, it's all we have around us here in the middle of the sea. <laughs> Definitely in the purest form and um, we call it kahanalu. Kahanalu. Kaha. Kaha is to cut or to soar as a bird. And nalu is wave. So you put to cut a wave or to soar as a bird and a wave, you put that together, we get kahanalu, body Amazing. surfing. <laughs> Amazing. Welcome. It's an absolute honor and privilege to have you on. We've been trying to get together this week and uh, I thank you for making time to come on down. Let's talk about Kiali'i as a young man growing up. Where did you grow up? <laughs> yeah, and what was, where did you grow up and what was that like? So I grew up in a village um, I would like to say like part of the plantation village. Mm -hmm. um, my great grandfather is a first generation plantation worker for Doe. And he came in here from the Philippines as a, basically an immigrant to work the lands here at the time. And so I'm also Filipino on top of my Hawaiian heritage. I grew up in Whitmore and that's in Wahiwa, but it's a village. Um, Whitmore Village. If you're familiar with the island, um, where Kukani Loko is, is where um, Hawaiian birdstones, and also a school from back in the ancient times. So right up there, towards Malka, um, Kukani Loko will have um, Whitmore Village. A really cool village that was just full of Hawaiian, Filipinos, and Samoans actually. A lot of a lot of them were third or second generation plantation workers as well so that was like the closest to the you know to the, all the pineapples and stuff like that basically plantation village homes a lot of yeah hawaiian filipino culture in this village and yeah i, mean, I grew up in whitmore village like the first half of my life as a young kid um grew, growing up around our families riding our bike in a circle and we had a thing called a manapua man and it's like this van that comes in with like, oh, it's basically like a, a store on wheels, a mini store on wheels. So they would have like ice cream, candy, I mean, you name it, they had it. And you go, you'd be like driving around with this music going on. You'd be like outside trying to yell for him, hey, stop right here. You know, and it's usually um, some Asian oriented person that were just, just trying to provide for the village. Hey, instead of you having to walk or drive to the store. We grew up, you know, doing that, playing, you know, a lot of various sports. Um, our family was very strict about keeping us in sports because um, sports was going to keep us out of trouble. <laughs> keep us out of trouble. Burn that energy. Bad things. Keep, keep active. <laughs> yeah. And because if there was no sports, I mean, a lot of us would, would go around Maybe catching chickens, like running into people's yards. Ooh, that's like, so, hey, get out of my yard. So naughty, bro. <laughs> yeah, do all that crazy stuff. And we would like keep these chickens as pets too. And like that would always give us something to do too. Like, oh my God. 
pet rooster right here. We made it tame and yeah, noticed that about Hawaii and even in Honolulu. I mean, in Waikiki. Yeah. In the morning, <laughs> I got woken up at the last Airbnb I was staying at. I got woken up every morning yeah. by a rooster, rooster crowing. Yeah. That was like, the alarm when you, clock. When you drive up the North Shore, there's just like yeah. crossing the road. There's chickens and loaded. I mean, it's just like Hawaii or an island of Kauai. It's just like. Once you land, the airport is just full with chickens around the area. Yeah, yeah, Steve. So yeah, I grew up in okay. Whitmore Village the yeah. first half of my life. Um, and we always had family beach time growing up. That was a very important thing we had in Hawaii. It was family time. So we'd all go to the beach together and that's when we surf, boogie board. I mean, you name it, anything to do with the water. We did we went fishing, um, snorkeling, high pie, what we call it, like lay a net. And then we chased the fish into the net. And that was all like family thing, but these family things are more so preserving the cultural to traditional things too. Family is like you were saying, that's your roots, that's your foundation. And a strong foundation will always produce a strong tree. And same thing with the Kalo, you know, um, our relationship with Kalo, you know. And that's part of growing Kalo, is just like the experience that you get from it. And through this experience, you can feed yourself. Yes. And the whole process of like, Cultivating, and like it has a lot of similarities to like in life, your own life. Too. And there's always there's a saying where like if your if your yard or your house is clean, mine is also clean. Most of most of us, I grew up in a public school. And there's also private schools here too for like Hawaiian. My parents never threw us in those schools because they wanted us to see the life in living in a modernized um, school system. Because we always can come back to our roots. Mm -hmm. But going to school at the time, we needed to go to school and learn the ways of you know, being a citizen yeah. for the United States and stuff like that. You know, being the same um, buddy that gave me this, he's like my link to like being able to practice our culture. Because, like I said, in public school, we never really got to do that. We were so focused on sports and school and getting good grades mm. that that was actually taking away, us away from our roots. Because my parents were strict too, you know. They're loving, loving parents. Best parents ever. But strict, and I understood why. Basically, you gotta be prepared for the world, you know. Uh, body surfing. And because we, we, we said this down on the beach, it's, it really is the purest form of connecting with the ocean. What does it mean to you? And why do you place so much love and emphasis on body surfing? It got deep. <laughs> um, it's just, it started from, so when I was born, my mom would grab our belly button and we would call it like a pico. And when it's dried and it, it falls off her belly button as a baby, she would throw it in the ocean. And she said that she finds at Ali'i Beach, which is in Haleiwa. And that's like one of the beaches we grew up. And it's kind of funny because my name is also Ali'i too. You know, Kid Ali'i. Yes. So it's probably why she did that. I don't know. I There's a little connection. Her. Yeah, yeah. And so she threw my belly button in the, in the water and that's that's one thought I would bring to like why I'm probably so like drawn to the ocean because of that. Um, yeah, so like my first relationship with the water was like, I remember my mom would bring me into like swimming pools and you know, we couldn't go in the, the water yet because there would still be waves and I would still be like, you know, a baby and would like me with the cuddles, those floaties on each arm and they would like leave me in the pool and like they would be ready to leave. Come on, let's go. We're going already. And I would be like, no. So I don't want to leave any water whatsoever. They'll be trying to use like the poo nets to like grab me and yank me back. So I like, they always had a hard time taking me away from the water. And so growing up in school, my mom was a, she didn't want me to grow up being, I guess I'd say a beach bum, they would call it. Every time we went beach, like I would always be the first one in, last one out. You know, I just love the ocean. and. and father would take us um, spearfishing. And so fast forward, I got my first job at Surf and Sea, Haleiwa, back in 2014. And that was like my first job at a surf shop. And so my parents said, if you want to go to, if you want to surf, well, you better find a job, pay some bills, then you can go surf. I was like, what, that's it? Okay. From there, like I started to learn a lot more about board board riding you know from body boards to short boarding to long board and then like around 2014 around that same time i was doing body surfing competitions i met a really good friend shawnee noka and we i did my first contest at point panic 
which was, I want to say 2012, 2013, around there. That's when I met Sean Inoka. He met me at Kiki Beach before the Hispanic contest, actually. He saw me dropping out some bombs at Kiki Beach. So that's kind of my home breaks, Waimea Bay and Kiki Beach on the North Shore. And I met Sean at one beach. He's like, hey, man, you should do the Point Panic competition. I'm like, where's Point Panic? And so he brought me there one day. He's like, man, this is where we're going to have a contest and everything. And so we did it. We did the contest. Because there's nobody in my heat, I automatically won that. At 18 and under division. And he's like, hey, man, like, why don't you come surf with us? And I was like, well, I'm surfing. And I was like, yeah, hit me up. And that's when I made a basically a connection of wave ride. Sean would basically like, he was a guy, like our mentor, and like bring us out to like some the sketchiest spots. Like I'm talking, like I thought it was only for board surfing. No, like he showed me that, oh, bro, you can body surf that. And, and it's just from there, we started surfing a lot of different breaks from secret breaks to like all the strictly body surfing only spots. Your life would have changed by then, and so would have mine. And hopefully, we can uh, we can get as deep yes. again. Yeah, for sure. Cool. Sure. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah. Aloha, brother.